but this anyway. conference will now be recorded. There we go. All right. Sorry. Didn't mean to break your flow. <laughs> no, not a problem. I will just keep uh, to. Uh, <laughs> um, so, yeah. So if you're looking for photos either online or on Facebook, um, it's best to get the original if you can um, all the time somebody that sends you a picture and it's going to be a screenshot picture they took that is a screenshot of another screenshot um right. so, you know if, if you can get the original picture basically you're, you have a lot more information there to to to, sh to to make it look better um you know you don't the ones on facebook you can use it um just just try to download it um, don't take a screenshot of it. Yeah, and also don't let anyone text you one because when you get one through a, a SMS service or MMS service, uh, it compresses it like completely. Um, and there may be some settings in there, but I've had a lot of people that say, well, they texted it to me from their phone. Um, and that's that's usually not the best way to go on that too. So <clears throat> I want to keep that in mind too. So. All right. Uh and Chris, I gave you presenter rights. I don't know if you want to drive and show him or whether we want Dave to walk through and we'll just kind of watch and uh, stuff like okay. that. However you... Um, sure, let me... How do I... Move this we can use, are, we, are, are we going to use my screen? Um, I suppose that would be the best thing. Um, okay. And that way you can have you know present better without having that lag and stuff trying to regain control of of um of his screen and that kind of stuff so that may be the best thing and that way we can kind of see what's happening all right and you guys can see that now right yeah and i may pop out just for a second because uh i gotta start my grill <laughs> i'm multitasking uh, let me shrink this right here how do we get completely gone? All right, I, I think I feel better now. Um, I wonder, yeah, now I have to, I think I just have to record it now. Um, I think it's it's still recording. Yeah, it's, okay, it's still good. recording. Yeah, we're good. All right, all right, good. All right, so let me find a photo to pull in here for you. And, and I'm on a Mac, so you know, depending on what you use, um, just know that's that's what I'm on. Uh, now, Dave, do you do more like um, logos and clip art and that kind of thing? Or are you talking about a full blown photo? A uh, full blown photo for like a, a memorial or something. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Well, that is one of my specialties. So I will uh, actually. I have photo edits here. So these are these are completed photos, and the editing process is a whole different other ball game. Um, but I can I can bring those in, and I can show you exactly what I did to them. Um, I can also right. bring them in. I can also open up Photoshop. What what photo editing program are you using? Uh, I've got Corel Draw. Okay, uh, everything should transfer over. Um, yeah. I like Photoshop better. Um, I find I've it easier. Some some uh, things in the Laser uh, Engraving Institute uh, from Mark Stipo, and uh, he he because he specializes in Corel Draw, so I actually have those steps, you know, to convert it to grayscale and do the unsharp mask and and all of that stuff. So I've got some resources for him if he's using Corel that may okay. parallel what you're going to talk I mean, about. I mean, so, I I can get whatever. I mean, whichever right. one's better. I mean, I'm that's just what I, I, I've researched. That was really what kept coming up was Corel yeah. Draw. Well, it's like Chris said, the process will kind of be the same. They may call it different things in the programs. There may be slightly different workflows, but at the end of the day, you're doing the same things to the images no matter what program you're using. So. Right. Is Photoshop, you think it's fairly easier or better? I I like it better. I've used everything, um, even some uh, other 
I think it's a is also like a mixture of the two um, and, and cheaper, supposedly. I like Photoshop. I found it to be easy. I found a ton of resources, but there's a lot out there for Corel as well. Yeah. Um, They'll all do what you want. So. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right. If I can go back and open up the other one as well. So here, I'm going to go back and forth between these two photos. And, and this is... These might not be the best ones, but this is what I and removing grounds is going to be huge, especially if you're doing some type of memorial, because the focus isn't the background. The focus is obviously okay. going going to be the face, and when you start um, to compensate for you know, these to light areas. Um, you you end up losing the features that you want, and then when you compensate for features, you end up at the background. So the best thing to do is get rid of the background. Um, the the other huge part of this is making sure the shading, like she's her face is really light, his is kind of dark. Um, so those are things you need to to think about when you're looking at it. This is what we ended up with. And I think I even did a little bit more editing because her face was still really bright. And and there's some some stuff in Lightburn that you can do as well. And I'll show you those. Um, but the the biggest thing that I find to help with with photo engraving is going to be the sharpness. Um, it is going to bring like you can see these little white blotches in his in his face or in his hair. Yeah. Yeah, um, even hers. She has nice little streaks. She has streaks. Um, you're going to get definite white lines um, around most of the edges, and and that's huge because and it looks silly. Like you, you wouldn't print this ever. Yeah, it would just look horrible as a print, um, especially the the photo that I have up here. And this kind of looks cartoony. It looks like somebody drew it as a uh, mugshot photo. Um, but if you're making a memorial, you need it to be flat and and consistent throughout. So you're not trying to compensate for the shadowing on one side of the face and uh, you know the the lightness of of other parts. So you end up having vary variations of of power and and the basically the the laser makes dots. So you're gonna have uh, a concentration of dots that just blow out the photo. But the um, the biggest thing, like I said, is, is one getting rid of the background. Two sharpness is huge, um, making all of those edges pop, because that's what you're going to be engraving. And feel free to ask any questions you you want as we go. So you just trace out the outline of the of the what you want to cut out of the background. Um, yes and no. Um, let me see. So on on this one here, and there's a couple different options on Photoshop. Um, I can use a magic eraser and I can adjust my tolerance. So if I did 80% right now, or I'm not sure what the tolerance means. I don't think it's 80%. Uh, you can see that everything is gone. Uh, if I adjust that down to a five, um, I'm going to remove basically a tolerance of colors, um, and it tries to find the edges. Uh, I find that a quick way to do it if they have, um, you know, a solid background, um, like it's, sky it's, or something it's, like that, where there's more contrast, maybe. Yeah, exactly. Where there's a lot, where there, there's a ton of contrast, it's really helpful. Um, otherwise, you can use a background eraser tool, and um, you can set it to find the edges. So it will try really, really hard. Like you can see, it's kind of fading into her arm. Um, and you can adjust that. It can be it can be set up. I think I have it as a feather right now. So you can actually set it up as a different uh, the hardness. You can change it so it's not as feathered. But yeah, I would I would do. You know, I would typically go through and, er and erase all the edges. And it's the same way in Corel. Um, I think you have a cutout tool 
which is a little bit different. Um, yeah, but it's almost yeah, we're like at, ISO or something, isn't it? Yeah, you, you got to draw a line and then you select the, the part that you want on the mm -hmm. inside. Um, yeah, so it's a little bit different, uh, but, but works similar. The, uh, another huge thing when you're doing this, um, I learned this the hard way a long time ago, is, is make sure you keep on clicking the button. <laughs> yeah. Because if you erase a whole bunch of stuff and you mess up and you go into his face uh -huh. uh, and you and you do a, a I can't do back. Why can't I do back? I'm limited to my. Uh... Oh, there we go. Yeah, if you go back, I just erase all that other stuff that I did. So I do small incrementals. So when I do go back, it's all if I do make a mistake, I can go back quickly and just fix that one part real quick. Yeah. And how are you going back? Um, I'm using my mouse button. I, I have a smart mouse button, so I have forward back buttons. Like I can, I can redo it. I can go back. Um, yeah, and I can program what I want my mouse to do. So it, control Control Z okay. is typically the undo. You know, you can back up in most programs by using Control Z or finding it in the okay. menu. All right. Yeah, you can you can definitely go through the menu and and you know edit, undo, erase. Uh, couldn't, like he said, usually, uh, I, yeah. I, yeah, command Z on mine, uh, but it would tell you right next to it. Okay. Yeah, on Windows, it's usually control Z. So uh, let me close out of this. So what you start with, removing the background, um, sharpness is huge, and I'll show you. Um, this one's a really bad example, so or it would take a lot of work to get it to where we want. Let's see. Yeah, actually, this is a good one where you can you can even see in the thumbnail the amount yeah. of lines that he has in his beard. Everything's over exaggerated almost. Yeah. What, yeah. And like I said, you you're not thinking of it in terms of man, I'm gonna print this, it needs to be good quality. No, I, I need the laser to see these highlights and draw to them. You know, the, the laser sees whites and and blacks, and that's all it knows. Um, right. You know, unless you're unless you're running grayscale, then it's going to do a variation. But you know, typically with photos, you're going to be uh, whites and blacks, and you you still even if you're doing a grayscale, you still want to focus on those details. Um, let me go up to filter sharpen um, unmask sharpen there's usually two types there's a smart sharpen and a unsharp mask um, i'm just gonna raise this up a little bit and whatever you're using go in and max these out you know max them out see exactly what they do find out where you need to be and your thresholds um, for for looking ridiculous and then getting a, the objective you want, um, but you can see that I'm I'm starting to get some of these lines in here, in his face um, or in his beard. Definitely high high contrast dimple. You know, uh, that's uh, this is a mother daughter. He's gonna know mom's mom always had that dimple when she smiled. So I want that to be pronounced. I want that to really show but right. then her you know her hair's blown out too um so yeah i would still remove all of this background i would try to get some of her hair back in fact on the one that i did of her yeah and you can see like i said you're not going to print that <laughs> it looks silly but yeah. when you go to engrave it it looks it looks really good um the edge of her nose. Do you leave it in color? Do you leave it in I color think, before you print it out? I, I mean, uh, engrave I, it. Yeah, I I do, only because uh, one, it's an extra step that's not needed because Lightburn does it all for you. Um, okay. Lightburn's gonna Lightburn's gonna resample it. Lightburn's gonna turn it to grayscale. Um, the old method, you would have to match your dpi you had to consider all of these different things when you brought it over to the program that you were using to create the uh dither pattern or to prep it for uh engraving with 
with light burn, you don't have to. You bring it in, you drop it in there. Um, I bring, if, if these photos are going on something significant that's painted or, um, you know, a painted tile, uh, acrylic, um, a, a painted tumbler, if we're going on something like that, I'm usually bringing in as high resolution as I can. Now, if you're doing granite, you have to approach granite as a completely different animal. Um, it is very, very finicky. David, what medium are you um, looking at? I know you probably do a lot, but is there a focus, you know, on on, on what material you're wanting to do the photos on? Mainly wood, marble, and granite, and some acrylic. Okay. 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 So when when I bring this over and I know I'm not doing it on granite, I'm I'm bringing it over as almost a, a thousand six hundred to a thousand DPI, um, and it, that that really goes against the norm of what you would probably be taught. Um, but in talking with Jason and knowing that Jason, the guy that created Lightburn knowing that his software does all the resampling for you um, when you send it to the machine. Basically, I'm just giving it as much information as I can to create those dot patterns. So I'm getting more detail, if that makes any sense. Yeah, and what, uh, what DPI would you run your laser on something like this? That also depends mm -hmm. on what, the medium. Uh, it depends on the process you're choosing it depends on your wattage and it depends on your 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 um lens so all those factors come into play okay uh, what uh what what laser do you have i have a nova 51 130 watt okay 130 watt um did you end up getting the um the high resolution lens yet yes Okay. Yes, I got right. it. So, so basically, you're working with the beam size. 130 watt has a huge beam size. We need to shrink that down as small as possible. So, using uh, the uh, the high resolution head will actually help you uh, run a, a little bit higher DPI. But you're going to be limited to uh, lower DPIs. I would probably be running somewhere in the 200 range. Um, with, um, let me go into some of the processes here and I'll show you shape properties. Uh, let's see, let's stay on. So over here we have all of our different, um, our different processes, uh, threshold and I'll click out of it and show you exactly what it's going to do. It, it, it's basically going to see the lights and the darks, and and that's it. Um, I think I have it on negative, too, so let's undo negative. And you don't have to turn it to a negative outside of um, light burn either. You can just keep it color, bring it right on over. Uh, you can negative it right here. So if you're going on granite, then obviously you're going to want to make it negative. If you're using... Uh, uh, let's see, acrylic or a tile that's painted black, like a white tile that's painted black and you're pulling the paint off. Um, you know, you can do all of your negative stuff right there. Threshold, and we'll move down ordered. And just go through some of what these do. And don't get scared when you see this. You see just an outline. Uh, mm -hmm. Typically, typically the the resolution of it and the dot pattern is very very difficult to see, and the computer cannot reproduce it until you zoom in. You just can't. It just can't see it. So on ordered, it's creating all of these dot patterns. And that's what you're gonna be looking for. You know, you zoom in and, and see how how bad, how, how good of a dot pattern it has created. Um, there really isn't a lot of thought process into, into these. I stick with about 
three different um, processes. I'm always between usually dither, Jarvis, and halftone. Halftone's uh, my favorite for high detail on everything except for granite. Um, but you also have to run a much higher DPI. Uh, grayscale is great. It works. Um, the only issue, go ahead. Yeah, it's it's a little finicky. That's that's the one that I need to practice on the most, I think, because you got to really hold your mouth right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, grayscale. The, the biggest thing with grayscale is not overpowering, because then you're going to get a a three dimensional. So if you had like an STL file for for um, a CNC machine. Um, where actually I might even have one here that I could show you. Yeah, you, you can cut, map. yeah, yeah, you can do a grayscale deep engraving for a three dimensional, and that's where this would come in really handy. Um, but it does do a really good job at photos as well. It's people mess up with the minimum power, um, quite often, and you have to have that right below your fire point. Um, I think now it. Your min power is your whites, and your max power is your blacks or darks. Um, and everything else in between, it's going to be fluctuating the two power um, to, to engrave the photo. So as long as you have those, those set within a, a good threshold, it's going to do a good job. Um, but people tend to either run that too high and they get a completely black image um or they're also wiping out all the detail by running a high dpi but my favorite is our newest option which is half tone um you can run this on granite but you have to turn down the cells per inch and also the dpi um, but i i i stick with uh dither or stucky um, the cells per inch, 200 is your maximum, unless he's changed it. No, he hasn't. Uh, so you're fitting 200 dots in a one inch square. Um, the, the angle, the half tone angle is the way that it lays the dots down. Um, two point or 22.5, you're trying to confuse the eye not to see it, not to see that angle. Um, and 22.5, I think, is the industry standard for newspapers and uh, fine print. So you don't get that. You, you can't see the scan direction, basically. That's what that's for, right? To, mm -hmm. to throw off that, that horizontal banding right. that happen, or the illusion of it. Yeah. All right. But this, I mean, you can obviously see that this has some incredible detail. Um, and actually, I can I can show you once this loads back up again. Yeah, I I kind of forced Jason to bump it up to two hundred. Uh, so if we went down to one hundred, and you can get some really cool effects with it too. Um, Sorry, my computer's taking so long. Damn, Max. <laughs> hey, those are good. They're good. I'm I'm not a Mac guy, but I like them. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, there is a pretty good difference there. You can see yeah. a little bit of that more effect or, or whatever is going yeah. on there. You can see that right. a little. Yeah. yeah is that actually, what you want? Yeah. Um, not really. You you kind of want to. That'll, that'll so. show. Yeah, that'll show up, and, and you don't want that. And that's why I maximize my um, my cells per inch. Uh, the other one that you will be using 
quite often would be probably these three, actually one, two, three, four. These are all, I would say almost the same. Um, it's just a slightly different dot pattern. Um, as you can see in the, the description below, um, they are all very, very similar. And I can actually get, get the same quality out of all four of them. Um, as long as my image is good when I bring it in. But I typically stick with Dither for Granite uh, or Jarvis. And Jarvis works really, really well for a lot of a lot of photos and a lot of different mediums or substrates. Come on. And make sure you have your shade according to power on too. Um, that'll help you see, especially if you're doing with grayscale. It'll let you know right away that you've messed up that minimum power. Right. And you want your minimum power on zero, right? Zero or just before, um, just before the tube turns on um, or, or right at the turn on point. Um, Brian, what is it on a 132? It's got to be like, what, 11, 12 percent? He must have dipped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, so I know with my old laser, um, anything under 11, the tube wouldn't, uh, wouldn't fire. Um, uh, the new, the new one, my, um, my new thunder will actually fire at about eight, which is really nice. Um, and I think my 40 watt lasers, they will fire close to four. Wow. And it's just, it's just the, you know, all that you have to excite all that gas to make the laser work. And there's just so much of it in a, a larger tube that you, you know, the minimum is just limited. Right. <clears throat> um yeah so those are the the basics of of the photos and where everything is located um i'm trying to think of something that we can go through so you can i don't want to do a complete start to finish but if you let's see if i can just grab let me uh google here do ph um Just do a black and let's say high quality. Yeah, uh, I'm new to all this laser. I've just now got, I got it in a couple months ago, but I'm just now having time to where I can actually play with it and start doing things. Yeah, and and I would and say I start with some. Good. I got a lot of people that's wanting stuff done now. But Isn't that funny? What? Yeah. <laughs> um, so if we pick a picture of, let's say we need to do a picture of this dog here. So right here, you see the resolution? Yeah. Always pay attention to that. Right. Um, you do not want to be downloading some, like, even that's kind of low. I mean, it looks like it would be really good, uh, but it's still kind of low to me. You know, it, I, I would say anything 600 to 2000, um, you, you're probably going to be safe. Let me right click this, copy image, paste. Yeah, and you can see that it's you know it's, it's kind of pixelated, but it would probably still work. Um, so if if you're going to be just dragging photos in and not doing a whole lot of external editing, you still have some stuff here that you can work with. Uh, we do have gamma, we do have contrast. I don't know if it's going to react well or not with. Uh... You said turn the contrast up pretty high, right? Uh, yeah, if you if you can, as long as you're not um, oh, losing yeah. a lot of yeah, losing a lot of detail. Uh, let me see here. 
So I don't know why he named it Enhanced Radius. It's actually Sharpen. Or if we can get his whiskers to stand out, those white whiskers or, or hair follicles, um, that's usually when you know you're going the right direction. And like I said, it, it's going to look a little ridiculous as if you wanted to print it. Uh, but we're not printing. We're, we're asking the laser to, to lay these little lines down there. You know what, he's 90. So we have, you know, we've got more edges, more, more details. Um, and that's really what you're looking for. And this would, this would probably do just fine on a, uh, on an engrave. Let's see here. And then whenever printing. you're doing, whenever you're engraving a photograph, like on a fade marble or something, do you run the speeds lower? Because I've noticed that. The slower the speed, the more detail I've put in some of the things that I've done. There was some things, there's a couple of things when I first started that I tried to print it off or tried to laser it, and half the picture didn't, didn't, it didn't engrave it. And uh, yeah, I, mean, I started, it, it, slowing, started slowing it down, and then more and more come in. Is this the same way with grant on granite? Yeah, granite granite is super picky, um, you know, and and there's there is a small window between engraving on it well, and then blowing it out, and and basically freckling. I call it freckling because you start to have these gray and 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 black blotches in the white area, um, and it's it's literally percentages. It, it's one even even a half a percent and you'll be on the money with granite um so yeah keep your keep your speed slow and i almost think of it like like a hose so if you had a hose and you're trying to spray something you usually hold it straight at it well if you started wiggling it back and forth now you're making the water coming out of it is following that curve so it's like an s now right a snake Okay. Yeah. So the fast, the faster you go, that that beam of light can't keep up. Um, mm -hmm. There, there is limitations in a, in a photo and in a vector, you may not even notice it. So if you're doing a, somebody's logo, you can go as fast as you want. It has a predetermined on and off point. Um, with a photo, it's trying to lay all these little tiny, tiny dots. And the faster you go, and those more more dots that you miss, the uh, you know the less quality you have. And then also DPI. Um, actually, let's use this as the example. Um, I want to zoom in really really far. So as you can see, I mean you have lines, uh, and then points where it turns on and off. So if your DPI is really close, you can erase the top and, and the, the bottom line that you just laid down. So right. having the right DPI is huge because you don't want to go through and start erasing stuff. And on, on granite, it's you're very, very limited to, to the DPI that you can run. Usually it's it's about 125 to, to 300 max depending on you know your power settings your your lens um you might be stuck with 130 watt tube you might be stuck in the uh the lower scale like you know 125 to 200 maybe dpi with that with the high resolution lens on granite but you you get the concept of of the dpi and overlapping of, of the lines and uh, yeah. Um, and, and you know where all this stuff is now, right? And yeah. a lot of it I didn't. There's a few things I've seen that I didn't realize was there, like that image mode and stuff. I had never messed with any of that. 
Yeah, and like I said, there, there's really you're going to find your favorites, and that's all you're, you're going to use. Um, huge thing is your scan angle. Now you see mine's at 180. Typically, at zero, uh, if you're doing a portrait of a person, um, it's starting at the bottom of the person, and usually you have a torso, and then you're working up. And then eventually, mm -hmm. the most important the most important part are the hairs, the hair and the eyes. <laughs> you know, those are the parts that you want to to really pop and and show. Well, I flip mine. I do 180. So now it's starting up top. I instantly see if my hair is good, and then you know my forehead, and then the eyes and eyebrows. Uh, so so if it's bad, I can stop and reset it, or um, not waste how, how newer. Yeah, don't waste all that time. How are, how new are you to your machine? Uh, real, barely new. <laughs> okay, so so on on the Rudia controller, you can actually live adjust. So as it's going, you can actually hit your speed or your power and bring it up and down. Um, the speed you're not going to typically mess with. So if you set it at ten speed, stick with that. Only go in and change you know one one aspect of it. Um, so if you notice that you're doing granite and you're barely getting any results, well, you could fine tune that while it's engraving. And then next time, you know, yeah, next I time, you know, know. yeah, it, it, it's very helpful. So it, it's engraving, it's doing its thing. You're like, man, I wish I've set that at 12 power. Well, hit the power button, the, the max power button, go in there and change it, you know, up. 0.2 or you know 0.5 and then see how it does and if it's not doing it well then you know do it again so if you run you know one or two images like that you could probably find your setting really really quick and then you're not messing around <clears throat> Brian do you yeah. do you know uh, the 130 watt do you know where that fires at uh like not exactly 11 supposedly 12 but oh hmm. i mean the, the the lower the lower cap is set to seven percent you know so zero percent right. on light burn i think is seven percent technically you know of course really it's just a metric so we don't need to call it get caught up in that rabbit hole um right but um, I've got some charts, uh, and they vary just a little bit, but not by much. I mean, they, you know, they've they've got it dialed in pretty good. Let me let me pull one of those up real quick and see if I can get some info on that. So the other machine that I had prior to owning um, a Thunder, the the power supply was a generic power supply, and uh, who knows? I don't know what the tube was, and it would not fire. Like I said, anything below eleven or twelve. And that was just a hundred watt. Now my hundred watt on my fifty one, um, I'm easily at, like he said, right around seven or eight. And, and that's just because, in my opinion, it's it's got a better power supply. It's able to excite the gases in that tube at a at a lower level, um, and and work. Yeah, um, I've got yeah. data on the hundred watt tubes. Um, and they fire about 1.7 percent. Yes, that's pretty uh, damn good. And 1.7, uh, Adam, that's an 80 watt machine, and it was at 1.7. So that that may be pretty close, which would equate to about eight eight percent of total total power supply, you know, output. Mm -hmm. So. Or you know, but they try to get the striking voltage, you know, set to the minimum. That's that's why they do that lower cap, um, so that right. so that you are within the range of the between this, you know, the striking voltage and 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 your max, you know, without going over. So that's where they get those values from, uh, that they cap them in the in the config if file. You them, if you run them a lot of low wattage like that, will it damage your tube? No, if you did a lot, no, it won't. I mean, really, the damage from the tube is from overdriving it because that uh, CO2 tube 
uh, you know, has that plasma arc that runs from the electrode to the cathode. And uh, it, it sputters that metal, uh, it's tantalum or something, or whatever that alloy is that they use for the electrodes. Um, and it actually sputters and causes those metal, you know, that metal molecules to come off and, and get uh, deposited on the uh, inside of the laser tube where the pumping chamber is. And that's typically what ends up making a tube fail because it throws the gas out of whack and all kinds of stuff. But uh, right. running it slow, there's no real adverse effects. It's kind of like, you know, if you drive your car hard, you're going to tear it up quicker. But if you're easy mm -hmm. on it, it'll last longer. You know, same, same, same basic, you know, uh, philosophy applies with the tubes. So. Okay. I know on like variable frequency drives and motors and stuff, once you get below a certain for 15% on a drive on, or 15 hertz, whatever, I know it's, it'll damage actually damage an electric motor i didn't know if it's the same on a laser right right yeah no it, it doesn't suffer from any of those uh kinds of things so yeah you can run them low it won't hurt a thing matter of fact right. when i engrave acrylic i'm as low as i can possibly get that in glass because it takes very little power to do those you know for edge you know for for surface engraving i do a lot of edge lit acrylic you know so i don't do a lot of deep engraving on acrylic i just barely barely uh mark the surface so right. that's not some of the stuff i want to do mm -hmm. what else we got now you can see that there's a lot of lines all through here uh -huh. I, I ended up using like an oil paint um feature uh, brush on the uh, on Photoshop and I use that quite often um, for memorial stuff um, basically to flatten out uh, let's see I think I used it and if somebody gives you a really bad picture you can use it as well uh, you can really make it pop I don't have the original of this here but this was a horrible photo and uh, it's hard to tell but I use that oil paint and then sharpening and then the oil paint again and um you know and i would drag out some of these lines to to make them more defined make them darker um not like i'm trying to make him look older but you know i ended up having to add little whites of the eyes in and and that's all stuff that you need to look at like if you're doing a memorial you typically don't have a choice of of what you're getting um and you're just going to have to try to make it look the best that you can uh you know lightening of the teeth so that that they're not the same power level or the same whiteness as the face because uh, right. then it all just starts to blend together um you want some of those features to really be pronounced <coughs> no i'm all yours man whatever uh questions you have and whatever way you want to take this i know i ran my mouth quite a bit <laughs> uh, it's teaching me everything. I mean, that's good. <laughs> yeah. So, um, shape properties. It, it's only going to work if you're selected on the photo. Um, anything that has the background removed, like this is, um, uh, th this has a transparency. The transparency will not enhance radius. So make sure all of that is done, and you're happy with it prior to bringing it in here. Um, but a standard photo will work fine. Uh, it's once you remove the background and export it as a PNG. Um, that's another thing. I I I save all of my photos as PNGs. So um, you get the PNG. alpha layer. Hmm? What was that? So you get that alpha PNG. layer. So you can have the transparency. Yeah. Yeah. Typically, if you if you export it as a JPEG or a BMP, it, it's going to add a background to it for the most part. Um, and, and and it's not it's not always uh lossless with yeah. with the png you can resize it however you want and it's not going to lose quality um and you also don't want you know if you're putting it on acrylic and you just spend all that time removing that background you don't want to export it with a white box <laughs> because then now when you go to negative it it's going to engrave that white box and you just defeated the whole purpose uh, so PNGs are, are typically the, the better format to use for these. 
Cool. Does that, does right. that help me, David, or does that confuse you more? Because it kind of confused me more. <laughs> well, it, it helped me some and confused me some, but I mean, yeah. I got to, I need to play with it and, you know, yeah. That's a lot of it. Yeah, that's a lot of it is just trial and error and seeing what they actually do. And that's that's where I haven't had the time to get in there and dig, you know, and just play, you know, and start changing settings and see what it actually does, you know. Um, and, and that's the I thing. You know, there's, there's programs and, and things like that that will prepare them for you. I've used them. Uh, and there's all kinds of stuff. And those are great for people. And, and you know, if you want to use those, that's good. But eventually uh, it's good to get you know, uh, intimately familiar with these settings so that you know what they do and you can do it to any image and you won't have to rely on some preset. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah. And, and it, it's heavily dependent on, on what you get and what you're bringing in. Um, you know, somebody sends you a picture of their dog and, and half of the dog's face is, is a shadow. You're not going to recover that. You're, you just can't. Um, so they're going to get half the dog's face engraved. Um, you know, so, so that stuff matters. Um, sharpness, brightness. I tend to think that, um, light burning graves darker than it looks on the screen. So I tend to, um, brighten it to the point where I don't think it should be. Um, so I would probably engrave it that light and I don't, I don't necessarily think it should be that. <laughs> that bright <clears throat> you know little things like that you'll have to mess around with and, and find um, but brightness um, making sure there's good contrast of eyes and facial features and then using that sharpness to really make hairs pop and edges really show up well yeah, and and I've found another resource. You know, we're we're talking about laser specific stuff here, but like Chris had mentioned earlier about newspapers, a lot of this, uh, a lot of this dithering, you know, it's been around forever and ever and ever. You know, since they've been printing images in newspapers, because that's what they usually do is half tone or or a Jarvis or something like that. You know, just the dots, and you can really learn. I learned more about uh, photos and and what DPI was. You know, and what cells were and, and all that and the other by actually going to look at uh, some old information about newspapers and how you print, you know, uh, not digital printing, but just old fashioned paper printing because the principles uh -huh. are all, the same. you know, so that opened up a, another line of resources for me when I was looking at that stuff. Yeah, and this one is, now it looks like it's really light, but it probably would engrave fine. Although this is newsprint, so newsprint, the dots are really, really, really big, typically. Yeah, it, it shows me a lot of the starting points. And like I said, the main thing is I'm just going to play with it. And, but now I know what to play with. Right. Yeah, and um, like you, like like you said, go slower. Um, especially grayscale, you're you're. I, I'm in inches per second. Um, grayscale, you typically want to be. Let's find out what what it is. I'm I'm between six and eight. Uh, so 100 and. Is that correct? 152. Brian, you might know better than me. What's that? Um, my my 25.4 inches or millimeters per inch. Um, 120 152.4. Let me let me see. Yeah. That's uh inches per minute, right? No, that's that's uh, it should be six inches per minute. One fifty two. Okay, I should be able to change it, and it's just not changing oh, here for some yeah. reason. Well, the speed the speed doesn't change globally with the um, with the units change from metric to imperial. 
because you can choose inches per second, inches, and then you can also be in inches yeah. and millimeters per second, or you can be in inches per minute. You gotta there choose you go. That. It is. There. 100, yeah, 152 inches per or millimeters per second for uh, something like grayscale, because keep in mind that tube is on the entire time. Yeah. Um, so, so you're going slower. So somewhere between six and eight inches per second, um, you may be able to max it out at 10. I usually don't go any higher. You start to get, um, smudging. Um, but with, uh, with, with some of the other stuff where it's just laying dots, uh, 10, 10 to 14 inches per second would be my max. Uh, and then power is just going to depend on what the substrate is. All right, but yeah, you're correct. the The faster you go, the the more um, quality you'll lose for sure. All right. Hope you took some notes. Oh yeah. Any yeah. any, re, any recorded it, so we should be good. Yeah, if you have any other questions for me, I'm. No, I think that's good. Like I said, that gives me a starting point. And like I said, I just have to play with it and figure out what works best for me. Yeah. And and as you do that, you'll have more questions. You know, as you get into it, you'll you'll be finding out more things. So, you know, we can revisit and, and follow up or something like that, you know, uh, as you kind of evolve in this stuff, because that's really what it is in evolution, you know, to... to mm get this stuff where you need it so yeah yeah use use those live buttons on the controller to to really figure out where you want to be um and by all means on facebook hit me up message me um i can always hop on go to meeting or team viewer and and hop on your your computer and uh you know and point you in the right direction Especially if you show me a result, show me what you're getting, and I can quickly tell you uh, this is what you've done wrong, or you're on the right path, or what have yeah. you. Yeah, that, that's that's good. That way, that way you've got a starting point, a reference, and then you can talk about that on things to make it better and all of that. So yeah, that's cool. So um, that's no good. Well, hopefully that'll give you some stuff to start on and think about you know, and tweak and maybe give you at least be able to wrap your head around this thing a little bit. Cause that's, you know, this is a, this is definitely a rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. Um, do you have any other questions right now, David, that are specific? Uh, any no, other sure. things? I done it. So, um, but yeah, play with that a little bit and we'll keep, we'll keep walking through this stuff and, and I'm learning as I go along too. So this has been beneficial for me as well. So. Yeah, I have, good. um, I think three, three other videos that I'm going to try to get done here within the next week. Mm -hmm. Um, I already, I already have photo prep, not for granite, but photo prep that is on, do I have it on thunder yet? I'll, I'll, I'll have everything up on thunder as well this weekend. Awesome. for um uh for youtube um, oh just to I let you guys know um you know we i started that forum that discourse um forum you know which is the platform that lightburn and cohesion 3d and th3d and a bunch of those other guys are using and it's great but what i've found is we're gonna have to go to an enterprise class uh service ticket system uh to be able to manage uh these things and the reason is you know, I realized it yesterday. I had two people that had a similar problems and I was getting the two people confused. And, you know, did I talk to this person? Did I follow up with this guy? So I'm going to start slowly routing all of these uh, questions and, and things, especially, you know, for the machine related stuff or even this. I mean, this is a good way for us not to let anybody fall through the cracks if they have a question. Um, so just be ready in the next couple of weeks. We're going to start rolling out our support ticket system and try to handle everything through there. Uh, so that all of our knowledge is in the same place, and all of our agents are in the same place, and uh, we're all on the same page and can manage that more efficiently. So just a just a little heads up on some stuff coming out soon. So all right, and Chris, where where do you say your videos was at on YouTube? 
Um, you, you're going to be able to find them on Thunder, or it's on House of uh, House of Lasers, um, which is okay. on YouTube, on YouTube, and on um, on Facebook. Yeah, I just created a Facebook yesterday just for this. Yeah. He, he's yeah. really jumping in the lines, Dan, isn't he, Chris? Getting on Facebook. <laughs> he's been blessed not having to get on that mess this long, this far. <laughs> no, especially here. Especially here recently, just uh, go on to your your laser user groups and and bypass looking at everything else. Yeah, right. So awesome. All right. Well, I appreciate it, Chris and uh, David. I hope that helped, yeah. and we can do this again and and all that stuff. But you know, we're just kind of rolling this thing out a little at a time and trying to collect this information where we can, so we can make it available to everybody else. So yeah, that was great. I appreciate it. Appreciate both of your help. All right, oh, well, no I'm going to jump off here and go pick up my, my meat before I burn it. And uh, <laughs> I'll let uh, let you guys keep going if you want. Chris, I gave you uh, organizer rights, so you can stay on here. Or if you want to call it, we'll go. I'll sit back and have a cold glass of iced tea and enjoy the rest of the evening. <laughs> you go do that, I, sir. I think I'm good. Okay. All right. Well, like I said, reach out if you need me. All right. I appreciate your help. Right, Thanks for problem, Chris. All right, bud. Thank you. Bye.